Years ago, I used to think white glue is for paper, yellow glue is for woodworking, and that's pretty much all there was to it. But with time and experience, I learned that there exists a wide range of glues that are really useful for woodworkers. And choosing the right one for your project can be a real game changer. You can solve some really frustrating problems if you just know a little bit about glue. So in this video, I'll pass on what I know to you so you can reap the benefits of glue technology in your workshop. None of these products are sponsored. This is just the glues that I use in my shop. Let's start with PVA glues. PVA stands for polyvinyl acetate. It's been around for quite a while, and the earliest versions were white. You probably used the stuff in grade school, but it's not just for making art with popcorn and paper. White PVA glue features a relatively long open time to get your work done, but it requires more time in the clamps before it's going to set up. In the past, white glue was widely used in woodworking, and it still is to some extent today. But yellow glues have become much more common in many workshops. Yellow glue is still PVA glue adhesive, but it's been modified with aliphatic resins. Some claim that the yellow color is a natural result of the formulation. Others say they add the yellow coloring to differentiate it from the white stuff. Regardless, the color isn't the only difference. Yellow glue has been formulated to solve some of the problems that woodworkers have with the older white glue. For example, while all glue is slippery and can cause your work pieces to creep when you apply clamping pressure to them, I'm sure we've all had that happen, yellow glue is made to be a bit more tacky, especially if you let the two pieces sit with glue on them for about a minute before you join the surfaces together. I'm not saying yellow glue won't slip at all. I'm just saying it's more manageable than white glue. These same properties that make it extra tacky also cause yellow glue to set up a little bit faster. This may not be a good thing if you have a complicated glue up to assemble, such as a bunch of finger joints or dovetails, but it does mean you can remove your clamps after about an hour. Just don't stress the joint too much until it cures overnight. Yellow glue is also a little bit more flexible. It dries slightly harder than white glue, and this may be one of the reasons why it's more moisture resistant. However, as we'll discuss shortly, only certain types of yellow glue are really suitable for areas of high moisture, such as outdoor products. Of course, this extra hardness also makes it less gummy when you sand it compared to a more flexible white glue. In my experience, yellow glue is also generally a bit stronger than white glue. But I think either may be plenty strong for many woodworking applications. And white glue does have its place in woodworking, particularly because it dries clear, and so it won't show a visible seam like yellow glue might. This makes it very desirable for those who maybe book match panels, for example. It seems that yellow glue is the real workhorse of many workshops, but not all yellow glues are the same. This particular brand, Tightbond, has three formulations of their yellow glue. Other brands like Elmer's or Gorilla make multiple versions of theirs as well. Tightbond's not a sponsor, it's just what I use. And all three of their formulas have a place in my workshop because they can do things that you may not have known about. Most of the time, I use the original Tightbond, which is what I keep in this container because it's fairly inexpensive and it's easy to clean up with water. If I get this on my clothes, as I usually tend to wipe my hands on myself, it usually comes out in the washer. Those are the main reasons I like it, cost and cleanup. Tight Bond 2 is a slightly different formulation. It's not coming out of your clothing once it dries, so watch where you wipe your hands. That's because it's water resistant. So it may be used in areas or for projects that will be in high humidity, such as a bathroom, or even a project that's going to be outdoors in the rain. This version also gets tacky even faster than the regular yellow glue, so I may choose it when I have something that I know is going to be a problem to keep aligned, such as maybe a bent lamination or shop-made veneers. Of course, that also means I have to work quicker during assembly because it has to be in the clamps in about four minutes or less. Tight Bond 3 is a specialty formula that I really like for some specific situations. It's fully waterproof rather than just water resistant, so I'm more confident using this on outdoor projects. It's also among the strongest PVA glues around, so it's a good choice where strength is of the utmost importance. 
This version may also be applied at lower temperatures. So when I had a drafty garage shop that I struggled to keep above 50 degrees in winter, I'd use Type Bond 3. I also like its darker color when I'm working with something like walnut. But I reach for this formulation most when I need more time to assemble a glue up because it has about twice the working time as the other standard PVA formulas. I really recommend that you have a bottle of each of these three on your shelf in your workshop, even if it's just a small bottle of the two specialty formulas, Type Bond 2 and 3. That way you can take advantage of these unique characteristics in your shop. Now let's move on to some non-PVA adhesives that I also find essential. This is liquid hide glue. It's a modern version of the animal glue that's been used for centuries. I like hide glue because it takes a long time to set up, which gives me lots of time to adjust my assembly, but also because the bond may be reversed with heat. This makes it my go-to adhesive for any joint that may be under so much stress that the wood itself may eventually break. Chairs are an excellent example. Someday, someone may have to replace a broken leg or a stretcher on your chair. And if you assemble the joints with hide glue, a little steam will soften it up and they can disassemble and repair it instead of tossing it. Hide glue only lasts about a year on the shelf though, so don't buy a bottle of this right now. Wait until you decide to build a chair or something that you're gonna need it for, then get some for that project. Epoxy is another favorite of mine. I sometimes use the injector style, but I really prefer to get the two separate bottles because it's more economical. By the way, I'll link to all this stuff below this video so you can make sure your shop is well equipped too. Epoxy is great for bonding things that aren't made from wood. I use it in jig making quite a bit. But it's also really useful for complex glue ups that require lots of assembly time. If you're gluing up a dovetailed or finger jointed chest, for example. Use epoxy instead of regular glue and you won't have to stress out so much and get things together so quickly. I also like epoxy for its gap filling properties. For example, maybe you, your dado set doesn't leave a smooth surface and you cut a tenon. Now you have a rough surface on the sides. Yellow glue isn't going to fill those gaps well. You'll have effectively less glue surface and a weaker joint. Epoxy can not only fill in those gaps between two rough surfaces, but it can also secure a loose or slightly imperfect joint. I also really like cyanoacrylate adhesive or CA glue. We may eventually make a whole video about ways you can use CA glue in your workshop, but I mostly use it when I need a really fast bond. I put the glue on one surface and I put the spray activator on another surface and it will form a ready to use bond in just two or three seconds. That's a game changer when I need to build a jig quickly and get back to work or for project parts that are too difficult to clamp in place. You simply don't need clamps with CA glue. The bond is also strong, but I think it's a little brittle, so I don't use it in every situation. I wouldn't use CA glue on a permanent joint in furniture, for example. You'll note I have three different bottles of it. One's very thin, which is handy for getting into fine cracks to make repairs. I use the medium consistency the most, but I also use the thick consistency quite a bit because it doesn't run down vertical surfaces. And of course, spray activator is a must with CA glue. If the bond isn't instant, what's the point? Interestingly, it's the moisture in the air that causes your CA glue tube to dry up on you, which is really annoying. So I keep mine in the freezer. The glue itself is not going to freeze, but the ultra low humidity environment inside the freezer will keep them from drying out. Again, we'll make a whole video about CA glues down the line. Another adhesive that I think is important in any shop that you, you definitely should have on hand is hot melt glue. This isn't just for crafts. It is really handy when you need a quick and easily reversible bond. So I might use hot melt glue to attach guide pieces to project parts so I can hold them better as I run them through the router or to sandwich a couple pieces together if I want to cut them equally on the bandsaw or bore identical holes in them. You can use it for attaching router templates. It has a good shear strength but low tensile strength. So that means it will hold together during these operations but it may be pried apart relatively easily. It's a low cost alternative to double-sided tape, 
but with the bonus of gap filling properties so it can be used on uneven surfaces that double-sided tape just does not hold well to. I've even used it for making custom shims for my table saw throat inserts. We have a video about that. Finally, because I know some people will ask about it, I want to touch on polyurethane adhesives, such as regular Gorilla Glue. I don't really use this stuff because I just think there's better options. Polyurethane glue is waterproof, but so is Tight Bond 3. Poly glue fills gaps and bonds with multiple types of materials, but so does epoxy. One thing it might be useful for is for damp wood, because poly glue needs moisture to work. You have to wet your dry wood if you're going to glue it with poly glue. But I've never had a reason to use it on damp wood. I also find it really messy. It foams out of the seams in your joint, so I just tend to avoid it. I'm sure there are other types of adhesives that you find useful in your workshop. I know some folks who use construction adhesive for some woodworking projects. But these are the ones that I use most and that I think you should have some, if not all of them, in your shop as well. So I'll link to them all below and I'll see you next time. MyWoodCutters.com is the sort of small business I like to support. Stefan is a great guy and he can find you knives and cutters for almost any joiner, planer, shaper, or molding machine. And his are the best prices if you're planning to upgrade to a helical carbide cutter head. Please use the link below this video to check with him before you buy somewhere else. Some small businesses are just worth supporting.